This week on Jersey Matters, the Boy Scouts are now accepting girls and the Girl Scouts are not happy about it. We'll talk to representatives of both organizations. Also, can a Republican be the mayor of Hoboken? We'll talk to candidate Karen Nason and a farm that exists in New Jersey to help children with learning disabilities. But first, as part of Jersey Matters continuing effort to introduce you to all of the candidates running for governor, here is our interview with Green Party candidate Seth Caperdale. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, as we do with every candidate, I want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to the voters. Okay. So I'm Seth Copperdale. I've been a pastor of the Reformed Church of Highland Park for 16 years. And while being there, I've started four major nonprofits. And the nonprofits that I run have done things like built affordable housing. We have 23 buildings and 125 tenants. We have homeless veterans, youth aging out of foster care, chronically homeless, mentally ill adults, justice involved youth, refugees, asylees. All of this kind of work, as well as reentry programs and, and um, church-based mental health service programs I've started, have exposed me to the incredible poverty in New Jersey and a lot of the structural racism and classism that exists in our state and makes us all suffer. I say every Sunday as a pastor, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, and then I walk outside and I don't see a political sphere that represents that idea that the last shall be first. And I believe that needs to happen now. That's why right. I'm running for governor. Great. Thank you. I didn't mean to step on you. No problem. Uh, I, I do want to get to the issues in a second, but I, I also want to talk about third party candidates for the yeah. And the fact that third party candidates, it, it doesn't seem like the Democratic and Republican parties agree on much, but they do fight together to keep out third party candidates. They work real hard at that. I, I, I know. Have you felt that? Yeah. Yeah, I felt it. Yeah, four hundred and thirty thousand dollars is the amount of money needed to get into the debates. You only need a hundred thousand to run for president. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, and also, but that doesn't explain the polling. Like yeah. you, you don't show up in any of the polls. That's right. We haven't yet been included in any poll put out by the state of New Jersey. That's not supposed to be something that we're kept from by not raising $430,000, but it is something that we're kept from. And if we're not in the polls, then we're not in the media about the results of the polls, and the people of New Jersey don't know who's actually on the ballot in November. Making it almost impossible for you to win. No, it doesn't make it impossible for almost us Almost impossible. No. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Only 39% of registered voters came out to vote for Democrat and Republican options the last time around when, when Christie got his second term. I'm going for the 61%. That's the forgotten. In the federal election, we talk about the flyover states that the Democrats just diss every year. Bernie didn't diss them, and he actually made tremendous inroads in those states. I'm doing the same thing in New Jersey. I'm going to the 61% of voters who are located in places that have been forgotten by the two-party duopoly that cares firstly about um, lining their pockets and trickling a little bit down to the rest of us. So you're going to get 61% of the vote? Is that what you're going to get at this point? I'm not getting 61% <laughs> of the vote, but I'm aiming at that percentage. And to be honest, I'm not trying to convert the faithful. Um, I'm a minister. I don't believe in forced conversion I, in religion or in politics. What I want to do is model something different, and hopefully some real progressives who've gotten stuck in the two-party duopoly might see that actually there's something else happening. There's a stream I'd like to join in on. And I want to get to what you're telling them in a moment, but in this election, doesn't it seem like, because of the polls we just talked about a second ago, that people out there are thinking, eh, Phil Murphy's going to win. Uh, it's already over because he's so far ahead in the polls. And that hurts a third-party candidate. That hurt, hurts anybody else running against him. Well, I don't think it hurts because the 61% don't have any idea who Phil Murphy is. I mean, I, I went through um, Union recently, Union City. I asked a thousand people one day who's running for the, um, you know, for governor as a Democrat. Nobody knew. And at, a couple people, when I said the name Murphy, said, doesn't he play second base for the Mets? I said, he used to. He's in Washington now. Nobody knows who's running for governor with the Democrats and the Republicans. So that gives somebody like me, who's actually on my feet with my lieutenant governor, Lisa Durden, walking through communities and meeting people who are feeling last, um, a, a good chance, I think. And, and what do you tell them? What I do is I start with a last or first agenda. So if the last are first, then folks who have gone to jail should never lose the right to vote. If the last are first, then no one should be making a dollar a day working in indentured servitude conditions within a jail. They should be able to make a living wage and support their family while they're locked up. If the last are first, then those half a million undocumented residents of New Jersey should be able to legally drive cars and take care of their families. If the last are first, then a $15 minimum wage needs to be in place. It's the very 
basic backbone of allowing po folks to pay for their own housing. If the last or first, we have to start with the things that matter. After school programs, licensed child care centers, all the things that have, have been left out. You, you know what people say about the Green Party. Oh, they're, they're out there, they're way too progressive, they're anti-business. Mm -hmm. For instance, how, why would somebody like Amazon come to New Jersey with Green Party policies? Okay, so I have a far better idea for Jeff Bezos than any of the things I've been hearing bandied about the last few days. If New Jersey had single-payer Medicare for All, which is a central part of my platform, then Jeff Bezos would know that an employer payroll tax of 6% would be what he'd be expected to pay for every employee toward the, the health care program in the state of New Jersey. Right now, Bezos would probably have to pay 13 to 15 percent um, toward the health insurance plans of the people working for him. That is a real uh, reason to not come to New Jersey, the high cost of health insurance. If we have a New Jersey single-payer plan, then that not only helps Amazon, it helps every business that supports Amazon. And it would help Jeff Bezos know that his employees um, not only have excellent health themselves, but their families and all the people that they're connected to. They're not going to have to take time off for work to care for their parents who don't have health insurance because their, their parents uh, would have the same health insurance, the same health care as everybody else. It would be a single payer plan that benefits every single person in the state of New Jersey. That's not only good for Amazon, it's good for small business and every business in between. So, so your argument is that universal health care will actually be less expensive for businesses? Way less expensive for businesses and for municipalities. Right now in my town, 19% of our municipal budget goes to pay for the health insurance, unregulated private health insurance of our teachers and our municipal employees. We would drive that down dramatically by being uh, participating in a New Jersey single payer Medicare for all. Same with the cost of um, higher education. Why is it so expensive? Why can't we help with tuition more? Because the state has to kick in huge amounts of money for the private unregulated health insurance plans of all the people who work in our universities. If they knew exactly how much they were contributing to New Jersey single-payer Medicare for all, they'd be able to help more. The state would be able to help more with the cost of tuition. I, I know you're a former Democrat, but it seems like that you and Kim Guadano agree on one thing, and that is that Phil Murphy as governor would drive Amazon away. That, that he would be too expensive for Amazon. Is that the case? Yeah, I, I think that um, probably that's true. Mm -hmm. that, why would he drive them away? Because of the tax on the rich? Y you know, you I, wouldn't to be do honest, that? No, I, I actually believe very much that we need um, progressive taxation. That's another part of my platform. The fact that we only have a seven bracket tax system. So wouldn't you be just as bad as him at driving I'd be Amazon just, away? I'd be just as bad at him in, in that regard, um, if you want to put it that way. I, I believe we should have at least 11 brackets instead of seven. Right now, 8.97 is the highest percent that anybody pays. If you're making 500000 you're paying 8.97% on any dollars after 500. And if you're making $20 million, you're still at 8 if you're making grotesque wealth off this system, you ought to be kicking back more into the commons. So he's talking about a $1.3 billion tax plan. And, and you have to give him credit for his honesty on that because that doesn't usually play in an election. Are you talking about the same thing? I, I think that I haven't gotten down to the exact dollar figure, but at least to the same thing. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in. Thanks so much for having me. Seth Copperdale, candidate for the Green Party for governor of New Jersey. When we come back. Still to come on Jersey Matters, can a Republican win a mayoral election in Hoboken? Karen Nason thinks so. We'll talk to her next.